Welcome to Epilogue Podcast, the show where we discuss some stuff that happened on a different show ages ago which nobody really cares about anymore. Hello, I'm Port Ponky. And I'm LeBlanc. Today, we're discussing Farscape, Season 1, Episode 3, Exodus from Genesis. Moya suffers a parasitic infestation whilst hiding from a Peacekeeper commando unit. How did you find this episode? I like this way more than the previous episode. It was more action-oriented. It's more exciting, there's a greater sense of peril, and it accomplishes things that the previous episode wanted to do, which is kind of change shift the perspective that you usually see in sci-fi shows as far as humans last episode they were devalued and then here they're devalued again and also just to remember that we're not always the heroes we're not always the best even though we like to think of ourselves that way we might actually be the worst (laughs) this one did a better job of making John seem kind of rubbish, but because he's confused, but well, he might be rubbish anyway. Uh, it, I think it, it had more of the kind of fish out of water situation for him. The previous episode would have been confusing even if he knew what was going on because it was confusing. Well, they're all out of their elements. Uh, doubly so for John, though. I say that because he complained about it. He actually said this. <laughs> <laughs> I liked when Zan said, uh, there's so much new information for you to assimilate. Sometimes the smaller, smaller things will elude you. It didn't feel like the writers trying to guide us into a realization. It felt like a character moment where we see, oh, she's the compassionate one. She can actually see why... John is struggling, but then it all makes sense at the same time. It was uh, well done. The others just think he's stupid. Which is fair. In context, he is kind of stupid in that there's a big chunk of information he doesn't know. But he's not stupid stupid. He's just unexperienced. Right. But that conversation was a good one to have early on in the show, just to remind people that this is how it would be. It would be confusing. A lot of stuff wouldn't make sense and people would probably be annoyed. I think it's enriched quite well by the crazy attention to detail they have. Um, In this episode, he's brushing his teeth with the dentic uh, insect thing. Or it looked like a a prawn or a crustacean of some kind. I really want to applaud that moment because at first it seems like a random bit of world building, which is great. I liked it right away. But then it ties into the greater narrative of the show and it's pointed out, or the greater narrative of the episode, and that's pointed out later on where is it an invasive species? Is it a symbiotic relationship it all depends it was uh it was nice oh i never realized that yeah it seems random at first which is good there will be these random moments where he's discovering new information but then it was really elegant how it tied in uh, to the bigger plot thread i liked it because he's brushing his teeth and (laughs) that's like on star trek you never see them they, like, they don't even have bathrooms. There's no such thing as brushing your teeth. I think we see people shaving a couple times, but it's just a mundane thing. But yeah, it would probably be different in a distant uh, part of space. It's also kind of minty. Kind of. I don't know if he was uh, convincing himself of that. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's That's pretty good. That's probably what's happening. If I just tell myself it's minty, it will be. He's got to do it. He's got to get used to it. 
dental hygiene is very important. Or so we're told. Um, uh, yeah, okay. The pacing of this episode was pretty good. Things no were... complaints. Yeah, things happening all the way through. Uh, I don't think there was really even time to get bored. Uh, I liked that the Marauder turned up about two-thirds of the way through. Just to complicate things. Why would it be easy when it could be much more difficult? I just like that it was a, a sort of dropped plot thread. They escaped from those guys, but no, actually they didn't. And now they have another problem. I don't know how many problems they had at that point, about three different problems. Yeah, they were drug juggling a couple problems there. There was a lot of unexpected stuff in this. Um, like what? Well, John beats up a giant insect <laughs> for a really long time. And then they dissect it. And it's all splayed out on the table, guts everywhere. When Rigel picked up a handful of goo, I thought he was going <laughs> to eat it. Yeah, I know. But wiping it on Z Zan was just as good. When she reacts as well, she's going to freak out at Rigel, but she's just actually realizing something else. Rigel once again becomes the reluctant hero. If stuff keeps happening in the bowels of Moya, then Rigel will continue to be the hero and save the day because he's the only one who could fit in there. That's only because Dargo cut a small hole. He should probably cut a actual doorway. <laughs> but it was hurting Moya. He had to limit how much pain he was going to inflict. The tensions there were all over the place. They don't work well as a team, but it's Dargo's hurting the ship, which makes Pilot angry, and then John's trying to get Dargo to be more gentle, and Rigel doesn't want to... I, I don't know, they're all not at each other's throats, but they... What's, what's the opposite of synergy? Because that's what they have. <laughs> a synergy? Yeah, there you go. Meanwhile, Aaron wants John to promise to kill her. That's pretty dark. It's fair. I'm talking she, about kind of dementia. She's asking an almost stranger to do that. Yep. And they never revealed John's true feelings on that matter. He never answered the question. And I really want to know. That's fine. It's good they did that. But maybe John doesn't know. Yeah, I don't think he does. To Aaron, I guess that's just like, you know, hey, hang up the washing, take the bins out, <laughs> murder me. But to John, it's a bit different because humans are kind of overly sentimental <laughs> about people staying alive. <laughs> well, in Farscape, it seems that way. You could see it in his face that he had no... Well, maybe he would have killed her if it gotten to a terrible point, but in his face, this is totally me reading into it, I, but I saw, I'm not going to promise anything and I hope it doesn't get to that point, so then it won't even matter. Yeah, just don't consider that possibility. Block that from your mind and we won't have to think about these difficult emotional problems. Another unexpected thing is that John ripped Aaron's arm off when it was bug Aaron. That was pretty gross. Well, not gross. Unexpected, as you said. It seemed like it was played for laughs, mostly. I find it kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> Real Aaron walks in and says, Crichton, what are you doing? 
Look at something he's done. <laughs> that dog is wobbling the arm back and forth later on. He is? I miss that. Yeah, in the background, when they're looking at the um, dead Aaron clone, he's got the arm. Oh, I'm of... so focused on the clone. I miss that. <laughs> he's sort of shaking it a bit. It's wobbly. In the past, many times you've talked about how they do split screen effects where two people look at each other but aren't really focusing <laughs> yeah. on them. Farscape hasn't held out long. It's straight into the multiple characters thing. I thought it was done pretty well. What did you think? It was mostly fine. There was... When he's fighting himself, I hate the quick cuts and the close cameras, and then the fighting's kind of incomprehensible. But they have to do that if they want to convincingly pull off, oh, he's fighting himself. I mean, there are limitations there. But overall, I think they did fine. It always gets tricky when you have the same character twice. And it always happens in sci-fi. It's easy to cook up a reason for there to be multiple people in sci-fi. Yeah, space insects infected your living ship, took your DNA, and made replicants. And they also replicated your clothes. And apparently, Dargo's sword. <laughs> John got his butt kicked by pretty much everyone. It happens. It's <laughs> quite a lot. He doesn't know how to space fight yet. Well, he learned because he got into a fight with Replicant Zan and she she roughed him up. He beat Replicant Aaron, pulls her arm off, and then he ripped his own Replicant head off and was carrying it around. Good trophy. Who's that good? Would you really put that no. on your metal piece? Your no, own... I would not. <laughs> I don't want to see my own head unattached from my body with lifeless eyes. Well, I guess lifeless or lifeful would be bad. Either it's way, my head. it's not the quality of the eyes that's the problem. The whole head thing. Yeah, the whole thing, the whole bit. There were no Rigel clones, though. As far as we know. And no pilot clones either. Although, I'm not sure if that would even make sense. We did get to see pilot up close, uh, interacting with Aaron. Pilot continues to look cool. Uh, there's uh, no doubt in my mind when I'm watching the screen, it just looks like an alien. I, I should say he looks like an alien. It's a puppet, it's just with robotic arms and stuff, but it looks fantastic. I might be biased. Yeah, you might be, but I agree. But there's something in this episode that did not look fantastic, and it Whoa. looked awful. You predicted my segue. Yeah, so Rigel got a, a bit of CG, CG treatment. And oh man, it is bad. It's really bad. Why did they do that? Uh, they needed him to walk in the pipe. But why? Uh, I, it seems like they could work around that with camera angles and the puppet and not do what they did. In retrospect, I'm sure they would have. Because it really doesn't look good. Maybe they thought it looked really good at the time. And that's why they did it. With TV shows often these CG shots come in weeks later and they don't have time to uh, redo them. Or oh, they, they yeah. couldn't switch it to going back and shooting it because the sets and the, the kind of alien hive has probably been dismantled by then or right. destroyed. It's not the main set without modifications. It was some special thing. Even then, I don't know if they could shoot stuff after the CG comes through when they're on a TV schedule. It's way further on in the process when they get CG done. 
So they could probably re CG it, but uh, I, considering the time period, I don't know if there'd be a great improvement. I think it was okay for the time period. Well, uh, it was passable for the time period. Um, 1999, I think this aired. It stands out so much. Yes, it really does. Especially in this episode when we have these new bug creatures that look fantastic. They're creepy and gross and they move around in an unsettling way. And then you have this CGI monster in a show that has awesome puppetry. When the bug stands up in, when John's going to fight it, it's very creepy. I love how he was jumping up on the, the beams and stuff. Immediately. That's what I might do. Oh, yeah, I don't fault him. I would have done it. Yeah, if I see a two-foot-long insect crawling through my room, I'm going to vacate the area very quickly. The insects were all puppets, as you say. They actually had to do a whole load of CG to remove the wires for the insects. Oh. They look great, though. Yeah, they do. No complaints on those guys. The monarch's nest as well was quite good, although they did that typical thing where it's sort of all obscured by things and stuff. Yeah, it works. This uh, show st still seems to splash the cash repeatedly. It looks irresponsible when I watch it. <laughs> I look at the screen and think this looks great. I don't understand how this was approved, but I'm glad it was. How did they get four seasons? <laughs> yeah, it, it really doesn't make sense. It's a good show. It just, yeah, it's odd that it was so expensive and yet quite obscure. Um... I don't think it ever really cracked that mainstream appeal that I think it wanted to. It had a lot of fans, though, that it was a much-loved show. But I'm guessing most of the fans were sci-fi fans to begin with. Right. And I love this show. I'm not saying it's not worthy of having money spent on it, but that's a huge gamble for a television network. Let's throw all this money at this new property that no one's ever heard of and hope it does well. It was partially an investment to prove that Henson puppetry was capable of doing all kinds of crazy stuff. That is certainly true. I think the idea was that because this show looks so great that that would be good for them in the long run. I don't know. Maybe it's not as expensive as it looks, but I do often think this show is slightly uh, lavish. Dargo is a bit stupid in this episode. Why? Because he wants to kill bugs? <laughs> See, why do they want to cut their fingers off? It's a solution. He was spitballing. Getting the Ideas going. He didn't raise it as a suggestion. He said, we will <laughs> all cut our smallest finger off. He also advised Rigel very uh, wisely. I have some unit news. Ooh. This episode gets docked quite a lot of points because they kept saying our instead of Arn. Aww. And the Peacekeeper Marauder can go H7, which John compares to Hyundai. I'm guessing that's the kind of car that's not very fast. That was a weird reference. I, I don't mean, know anything not, about cars. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I'm aware of Hyundai, but I don't think of them as makers of slow cars. Were they, they 20 years ago, though? Oh, right. 
I'm not thinking of their reputation a long time ago. In your version of the episode, did John tell Zan he would rent her a copy of Animal House? Yes, he did. Okay, that was originally cut from the US broadcast. Oh. Uh, for, I think, time reasons. That reminds me that I'm glad John keeps referencing Earth stuff because it's what he knows and it's familiar to him and he doesn't know how not to talk like that, even though none of that stuff is translating. He doesn't seem to care. Right. I, I think he does it to satisfy himself because he knows it's not helping. That's the only thing he has is pop culture references. <laughs> Maybe he knows nothing about cars, but he said, yeah, it's a uh, Hyundai. <laughs> it's like, that's a type of car, they won't know what that means. <laughs> They'll just assume I'm brilliant. Were you listening to the music? No. Okay. Well, I mean, not actively. I'm sure I heard it. There was some cheesy sort of porno jazz music going on uh, okay for like quite a long time you know like uh drop bass synths and stuff when he's before he fights the bug it's kind of it's weird and alien it just felt cheap almost out of place i must be really good at ignoring these awkward music cues because all the ones you pointed out, I did not pick up on. It might just be because I've seen it a few times, and I know the music changes slightly to match the tone of the show eventually, so when it doesn't, I'm kind of brought out of the emotion. I know as I'm watching, I frame this show in my head as, this is an old sci-fi show. So I think whenever there's something off-putting such as music i dismiss it immediately as just a product of its era even though that doesn't i think it what the stuff you're saying probably still came off as weird when it aired the music is supposed to be weird because it's a weird alien ship i just i don't know if you go back and listen to it again you might see what i'm <laughs> saying maybe it's just me Let's just say it's all you. You're the weirdo. Oh, yeah. I could believe that. Zan revealed another ability in this episode. Oh, yeah, she can paint. She's a regular Bob Ross, except he never did portraits. I thought it was quite rude that she messed up his painting. Yeah, painted right over it. Her one it was way better. Sure, but you don't just paint over someone's work. It feels like taking a child's painting, and I know that's maybe profiling Rigel's based on his size, but <laughs> just drawing over it like, no, look, you got all this wrong. The perspective is way off. Uh person's arms are not attached to their head. That sort of thing. I'm not putting this up on the fridge until I've fixed it. <laughs> he was painting to paint, not to have the best representation of himself. Well, that's yeah. a huge assumption, but... Well, he seems happy with it. Yeah, like, maybe... He wasn't frustrated, like, oh, this looks terrible. We're the idiots, and that's actually exactly what he wanted. As a king, he probably has an eye for fine art, and her painting was reasonably realistic. I mean, he can paint another terrible-looking Rigel. <laughs> it's probably not that hard for him. But he'll never have that specific terrible Rigel. I guess. It was ruined, though. He said it was ruined. But he wasn't oh, right. when she did the spirit painting. Zan, you're so confusing. You're nice and compassionate all the time, but then occasionally rude about paintings. Well... She was appealing to his ego. She said, oh, look how much you look like Rigel the First. Or, I think that was it. Yeah. 
and then she does that again later. So she was planting the seeds so she could exploit them later. Maybe she's not that nice then. Or maybe we're reading way too much into something which they probably <laughs> didn't really think about when they were making this. No. Do you have a quote from the show that you'd like to share with us? Time and patience. Is that your answer for everything? Yes, because it's always the right answer. What if you're defusing a bomb? Then you need time and patience. Uh, well, that actually does make sense. Yeah, because you need more time and you need to be patient so you don't clip the wrong wire and explode. You may not have more time, though. But that's what the answer is. Oh, for more time. Yeah, it that's what help. you need. What if you're serving a prison sentence? Oh, you, you need patience, time and yeah. patience. Well, you don't need time. You've got plenty of that. Well, you want time after your uh, sentence is over. I <laughs> will think of a counterexample. I will counter it with time and patience because that is always the right answer. Okay. Uh, perhaps we should move on to the next episode. We are still in the midst of rearranged stuff. So the next episode is called Throne for a Loss. Do you know the best way to watch the next episode? With your whole body? With time and patience. Oh, okay, right. That's wearing thin, so I'm going to cut you need us patience. out of time. The, the end. <laughs>